change as well as in the general community. So Gwen, can you put the pencils out and make sure you count them for security reasons? Okay, I will. Thank you. Hi, this is Michelle and I am in the GED room. If you could let the ladies know that we're here. Thank you. Mm, bye. Come on in, guys. Okay. All right, hi, everybody. My name is Michelle, and I am from the U of A Camp Wellness Program. I've been incarcerated three times. My last time getting out of prison was back in 2007. Um, I have 12 and a half years clean and sober after a 23-year addiction. In 1996, I caught a possession case. Well, I got out of jail, went to a treatment center. I was only there briefly. Uh, because I ended up just leaving and relapsing, of course. I got out in 1998. In fact, when I went in, I went in pregnant. And I had my son in prison, my third child in prison. Ended up relapsing, ended up getting pregnant again. So it was off and on, going in and out. So if you're a mother, could you guys raise your hand for me? I just need to know how many of you are mothers. Everybody, all but one. I have five kids, and four of my kids went through my addiction with me. It was very hard as a mother. Uh, I would always write my kids. My mom would always send them money for me, from me, for their birthdays. It was very difficult, because when your kids don't want to be a part of your life, and you can understand. Um, it was difficult, to, it was hurtful to understand. But I could also understand being embarrassed that their mother was in prison or their mother was a drug addict. So I could totally understand why they wouldn't want that connection. And that was one of the hardest things for me to hear. My own kids say they hated me, they were angry with me. Um, being embarrassed. And then I have my eight-year-old whom I have sole legal custody of. She's about as tall as me now. And I'm so proud of you. You did good. Yay. I'm proud of you. Trinity is an amazing little girl. She has a spirit about her that's just so loving. I'm really blessed uh, to have her in my life today. So in a way, it's kind of sad because I didn't get that bond with my other kids. I mean, I had some of it, uh, but it wasn't like the bond that Trinity and I have. I didn't get that with like Patrick, Gabby, Michael, and JJ. I didn't get that with them. Um, and I can't make up for my past. Hi, how are you? Good, um, we two pedicures. We're regaining our relationship together, all my other kids, and I think with Trinity, it's just a blessing that I'm able to do and be a mother today to her. I'm glad that I'm getting this time with her. I mean, I can't say I'm sorry enough to them. My mother never knew how to handle it. Uh, she didn't understand it. She did the best she could with what she kind of knew. When she passed away, I didn't know how to handle it. I just remember her, them wheeling her out and um, her and I saying, I love you. And that was like the last time I saw her because I couldn't go into hospice to see her. Yeah. I always say that her death brought me life. It was time for me to grow up and it was time for me to stop doing what I was doing. I had to go through what I had to go through to get to where I need to be. I had to go through this 23 years of craziness. And now I just want to help anybody that wants to change their life. Anybody that wants to walk away from the streets and the addiction. Deep breath in. My full-time job, I work at the U of A RISE Camp Wellness Program, and that's with people in behavioral health. So I reach out to help them, helping with the life skills and the coping skills. Even people in the streets when they're getting high or not with a mental illness, they don't know how to cook, so we teach people how to cook. We teach people how to buy healthier food to work out, exercise, to love themselves. 
I'm also part of the Safety and Justice Community Collaborative, which is trying to find a way to lower our criminal justice system. This last time incarceration, they told me you're a three-time loser and you will never amount to anything. And I just remember thinking, you're wrong. I want to be somebody. And it was that day that I sat down and I started putting things together in my life. What did I really want to do? I think I started with a month, three months, six months, a year, three years, five years, and 10 years. One month was, of course, getting out, doing parole, doing the right thing, looking for a job. Six months being in my own place. And at 10 years, I wanted my home. So what ended up happening was I got out in 2007 and um, within three years, I had a car of that year, and my first home was built from the ground up. And then in five years, I got another car, and then in 10 years, my second home was built from the ground up. So I now own two homes. And two cars. And two cars, yeah. <laughs> So today my life is totally different. Today I, I choose to advocate and try and help those getting out, trying to help them the best way that I can and knowing that they don't have to continue on that path. Um, I work for the state, I no longer live for the state. And for a total blessing, I am a foster mother of four. Anyway, baby, what are you doing? You just love you. Depending on what day it is, I'm switching vehicles every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> Big, like a giant dinosaur. <gasps> wow. I wanted to help people. I also wanted to give back. And that's why I'm a foster parent today. It's a way of giving back. Somebody was there for my kids. It's time for me to be there for somebody else's kids. It means a lot to me that I'm able to take care of them. Just recently, January 11th, which is my daughter's birthday, my daughter Gabby's birthday, uh, the rights were severed from the parents. And so I will be looking to adopt my two-year-old. In fact, today, the uh, case should be going to the adoption unit. My struggle, it's real, and so I get it. I know that a lot of people, when they get out, it's like it's hard, and everybody just sees me as an ex-con or an ex-felon. and. I always think that it's how you present yourself to others. Yes, you're gonna have doors that are gonna close on you. And you're gonna feel like you're boxed in. You're gonna feel like you're losing it. You're just gonna wanna scream. You're gonna feel like I just give up. But I always suggest to anybody, don't give up. Because it is hard and people are gonna look at you. They're gonna down you. They're not gonna believe that you can change. Um, but you have to believe that you can change. I knew that I could change. I knew that I wasn't that person that I used to be.